Hey, welcome back to the AJP Tour podcast. I'm your host, Will Safford, and thank you for joining us for episode two. A little later on, we'll get into our interview with black belt Michael Liera Jr. But before then, there's a few updates we want to let you know about. First, the registration deadline for the upcoming Abu Dhabi Grand Slam in Miami has been pushed back to September 19th. That means you still have some time to sign up to register and compete down in Miami on September 27th. We're really excited for this one. It's the first time we're getting back on the mats since we had to pause earlier in the year. So be sure to check out AJPTour.com where you can get all the information, including our safety guidelines. We have worked to put together an extensive set of guidelines in order to keep everyone on site safe at our upcoming competitions, from athletes, referees, coaches, everyone there. So make sure you get informed and understand what you need to do to keep yourself safe and everyone around you. Speaking of the upcoming Miami Grand Slam, if you go to our YouTube channel, we just launched a preview of the Black Belt Division where we explain who to watch out for in the Black Belt Divisions. Guys like Kalal Santos, Yago George, Kennedy Maciel, Mike Liera Jr., Marcio Andre, Jonathan Alves, Devante Johnson, Jessica Khan, Gabby Pisana. So check out our preview on our YouTube channel to understand who you should keep an eye out for when the competition starts on September 27. Also, while you're on our website, AJPTour.com, we just launched a brand new awards hall. Now this was launched to celebrate the legacy of the heroes who made history in the tour since 2009. In a collective effort to recover the memory of the tournaments held all over the world in the past decade, the AJP has listed all champions and award winners. We list the gold medalists of all the Abu Dhabi World Professional Jiu Jitsu Championships, AKA the World Pro since 2009 as well as the champions in the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam Tour events since their debut in the 2015-2016 season. You can also see the list of the best of the season awards, which started in 2016 and 2017. In addition, you can see all of the Super Slam champions, who are those who have won all of the Grand Slam events in a single season, as well as the Golden Slam champions, which not only did they win all of the Grand Slam events in a single season, but also the World Pro. So we're happy to highlight those heroes and those competitors who have made history on the Abu Dhabi Tour. So make sure you check out our awards hall at AJPTour.com. Now, without further ado, let's get into the latest episode with Michael Liera Jr. All right, and we are back on the AJP Tour podcast. Today we have Michael Liera Jr. on the show. Michael, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Man, it's been a crazy year. Uh, I know you just started a new school, relatively new. I think it was maybe at the end of 2019, you, you started a brand new school out in Denver, Colorado. Tell me, what is uh, what has your experience been like in 2020 doing jujitsu? Um, it's been pretty wild. Like the first few months were really nice. We opened the academy um, in January. So it was just like huge kind of rush, you know, meeting all these new people that were coming in and then eventually kind of creating that, that family and that bond that we have at the academy now. And then it being test or well, first us having our, our day at uh, a tournament, like all winning and then going to the fight to win and doing that whole thing. But then one week after that tournament, um, the pandemic kind of all came crashing down and we all went into lockdown. So the academy is like, the academy's sense of community and, and community in general, we all got tested, you know, like it was crazy to feel the support of everybody even through months and months and months of being pretty much shut down mm. but uh it was good it was good like on one hand i would think uh i wish i would have waited and opened the gym after right and like the progress we've made even with the pandemic and and uh and all of that that has happened this year um it's good i like where we're at 
Nice, man. That's that's pretty wild. I mean, you start a brand new school. Um, you said you you basically your grand opening was in January of 2020. Yeah, actually, we didn't even get to have a grand opening. Our our like soft opening was in January, and we were planning on having something after the Pan Ams. Wow. And we invited everybody out, but you know, it all plans were changed for everybody. Um, but yeah, things are things are back, so it's good. Yeah, it's uh, it's. I think the jujitsu community has always been known as a tight knit community, and everyone kind of has everyone's back. But during this time, you really hear those awesome stories about, you know, students who continue to pay their tuition even when they weren't training, and uh, just doing everything they can to help their academy owner keep their door open uh, during this time. When you uh, during the the lockdown or during that time when when it was just started were you still able to get training in at all so i would say within the first two or three weeks of lockdown happening you know everybody we all kind of knew it was coming that we would be shut down for a little bit longer but we were holding on to optimistic hopes that we'd be back and running within the month so we kind of just laid low and uh and stayed safe and me and yj my assistant instructor over at logos like Mm -hmm. we just we pretty much relaxed which we didn't get a chance to do the first four or five months of living here just constantly hustling and training and get things going so we used the first two three weeks to kind of just settle down and uh and just catch up with with our own health and uh, it was much needed but then eventually we kind of started to realize like, okay, the, the lockdown's going to be for a minute. So we brought mats over to the apartment here and me and YJ were training uh, together, maybe two, three hours a day here, drilling and then wow. doing, doing what we could. And then as things started to loosen up um, that next month or so, um, I started inviting people into the apartment so I could get some rounds. And, uh, and then so like pretty much this whole entire time I've been, I've been training in some form. And, uh, and as soon as we could open back up for our members, at least, uh, uh, the training just kickstarted and we we went right back into uh, uh, getting at least back into shape if we couldn't be in full contact sparring with each other. Very nice, man. It seems like that's kind of how it's been the, you know, getting a, a small group of, uh, of partners that you trust. And uh, lucky enough, your business partner, YJ, who you keep referring to, he's also your roommate. You guys, you guys live in the same place. So um, that's huge. You know, you guys have been able to, to stay, I guess, active for, uh, for this entire time. Speaking of YJ, I know you guys have a very interesting way that you train slash drill. And, um, last time I was out in San Diego, you were breaking it down to me. It's almost like, uh, like, uh, you're, you're training your brain, right? When you, when you're doing the type of training that you're doing and you're not going a hundred percent because you can't really keep up that level of a hundred percent intensity all the time. So can you kind of tell us about that, like unique style of drilling slash training that you do? Uh, to be honest, we just try to do our best and, the sense of like uh, uh, not only training hard but you know we have to do um, we we have to work with what we have and right now we have each other and everybody at the academy and uh, you know like for me replicate like right now the big issue not even issue but what uh, the situation that I'm in um, like I don't have people that necessarily like replicate fully what i'm going to be competing against right to uh you know top 170 pounders in the world so instead we have to you know replicate little parts of you know the jujitsu and the matches that i'm going to be in and just like different ways to kind of stimulate like our our jujitsu progress like however we can and we have a lot of time to do it now because we obviously run the academy and, uh, and you know, the space is ours, the time is ours. 
So every day we go in, I try to think about like what it is that I want to get better at and what type of training would induce those types of results. So like, uh, you know, I want to get better at retaining my guard or some specific area of guard, like, or passing, whatever it is, like it's, it's honed in and focused on that little area, that smaller like subject or topic for the day rather than um, just hard sparring. And to be honest, this is kind of how I like training mm -hmm. for it anyway. Uh, so um, as the, the bigger turn, all the tournaments that are coming up, like the, the, uh, the pro tour with the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam, um, like they all kind of came up on us out of nowhere. But uh, we've been doing this kind of training, so I feel ready. And then as these tournaments keep rolling on and as the, the pro tour keeps going, like I'll reach out to someone back home at HQ in San Diego mm -hmm. and, uh, and get the autos, you know, maybe one or two guys to come over here and give me, give us all good rounds. So it's just constantly working on training, like one step at a time. And right now, uh, I feel like these tournaments, the, the grand slam and everything are, are good training for me almost more than, than uh, like tournaments exactly yeah right on man um in episode one we spoke with isaac Dodeline and he was saying something similar about how he really enjoys this type of training because he can just work on specifically what he wants to work on and he was telling us that uh he's made some breakthroughs with with uh pressure passing and knee cutting is there anything that you've really kind of uh any breakthroughs you've had during uh during this time yeah, they're like that's fun. it's funny that he says. That. I'm sure a lot of people are are feeling this right now with the type of training that we're all being forced into. Um, I definitely have a, a bunch of new, uh, just like new angles and positions that, that I'd never really thought of mm -hmm. before because of how much time we've had to to drill. Um, me and YJ will you know, slowly drill and go through different positions, and usually, you know. Like, the drilling is to kind of uh, reinforce what I already know. But lately we've been entering the realm of like, of, uh, of the unknown a lot more. So it's like, we're, we're finding different ways to move the body and stuff, especially on top right now and chaining passes. Like I always knew that um, my top game like, is always like one step behind what I'm working on. For the guard just because that's where i feel more natural mm -hmm. it's playing on bottom but um but lately it's been so much time just kind of moving through things that i feel like my body is starting to understand like the top position more and i'm starting to understand how to connect things more which um is really helping well that's awesome man jiu-jitsu is all about those connections right so um, we saw you signed up for the upcoming uh, Grand Slam in Miami on September 27th. One of your first Grand Slam events. Can you tell us why you decided to uh, to throw your hat in there for this one? Um, well, I used to do the, the World Pro events all the time, going to Abu Dhabi. I did in that blue, purple, and brown. Mm -hmm. And then for whatever reason, like I think they started changing up the, the – format and stuff and, and i started taking a step uh i took a step back from, from traveling out that way and uh uh just recently like i don't know i feel like i want to test myself in any kind of rule set or competition or, or whatever it is so the, the the grand slam i know puts on like a super good uh they run really well through the year with different like tournaments in different places. And I know that they do a good job of like running it through. So I'm stoked. I want, I want to get in there. Yeah. It's been a while too, right. Since, uh, since competition, um, I guess March, you know, when no one, no one's really been competing. There have been some other small super fight type shows and things like that, but tournament style, like you just said, uh, we haven't had those in months. Yeah. So that's my, like, that's where I feel most comfortable. 
um, super fight events have been rad. Like I started uh, throwing my head in those types of uh, uh-huh. uh, format and, and event type styles. But like I like going into a bracket. And as soon as I heard that they were throwing one in Florida, I was like, okay, like this is a perfect time. I'm in shape. I'm ready. And you know, it's it's one of the only it seems like right now. So I I planned on doing it as soon as I heard. That's great, man. Speaking of your bracket, the under seventy seven kilo bracket uh, division rather is uh, maybe one of the most competitive. It's got I think the most competitors signed up. And it's just got a big, very extensive mix of, um, of athletes from veterans, Marcio Andre, yourself. And then it's got uh, up and comers, Jonathan Alves, um, Johnny Tama. He's been around for a few years, but, you know, really experienced guys, new up and comers. What do you, what do you think overall about the, uh, the 77 division? Oh, it's, it's good. It's great. You know, just like you're saying, those are, you know, some of the top names. Marcel's always tough. Um, I think his jiu-jitsu is some of the best out there that you can watch. Um, Tama always has really good performances and you know, you can never really predict what he's going to come with. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about uh, Marcio Andre because I think you guys, I think you've had three matches so far. I think you've got them two to one in the... Uh, if you count our brown belt match, we've had four, but at black belt, yeah, three. Okay, so I mean, a, a great rival for you. What is uh, what's it been like going against Marcio over the years? Uh it's it's cool. I think uh, him and I came well. Him and I came up pretty much like the same type of generation. Of yeah, people, you know? but he was always a featherweight. And then he started uh, fighting at lightweight a little bit more, but then I started fighting at middleweight a little bit more. And then now I'm coming back down to lightweight and he went back down to featherweight, but now he's moving back up to lightweight. So <laughs> you know, it's like, it's cool just, you know, uh, always seeing him in the division. And right now him and I are in very similar spots. He has his, his academy in Arizona, in Phoenix, and uh, he's doing his own thing training hard with his guys, I'm sure, and uh, and doing it for his academy the same way that I'm doing it here for mine. And, uh, and it, like, on, on one, you know, uh, on one hand, we are rivals, we're competitive, or whatever you want to call it, but, you know, doing jujitsu and, and, and uh, being in this martial art, essentially, I see us more as being family, and I'm rooting for him just the same way. It always seems like he's doing for me. So, um, it'll be good to go into the bracket with him. And, and when it comes down to it, I'm stoked to fight him again, just as, as we always do. And, uh, yeah, he's great. I think he's, he's awesome. Awesome, man. And then, uh, Johnny Tama, I think you guys are one and one with each other. Um, I think he got you with the Tama. He's got a, he's got a Tama lock. Yeah. So, Something to watch out for from him, right? Of course, of course. Yeah, it, it, he got me with the Tomalock in Guam a few years ago. I think it was like 2017 or so. And uh, uh, yeah, another guy that's like, you know, he's pretty close to, to when I came up. I think he was like a belt below me. But he moved to San Diego when I was out there. And same type of thing. Like I'm rooting for these guys the same way. I feel the same support from them. And, uh, and when we all clash, that's what people are looking forward to. Like, it's, it's cool because I'm kind of adjusting right now. Like I used to fight at middleweight and I was just, um, was holding on to like a lot more muscle and, and, and just weight in general. When I was training back home, I felt like everyone was a little bit heavier and I had to like keep up with that weight. But now, um, with the amount of hours I'm training at the gym, um, I'm feeling more comfortable at this weight. And this is kind of where I, where like, uh, technically I feel at my peak and this type of shape, I feel like most ca- most able and capable of like performing good jujitsu. So I'm stoked. I'm, I want to, uh, use this tournament to really find my adjustments at this weight and then keep going. 
Awesome, man. It's it's kind of an interesting time because we haven't really seen anybody. So everyone is coming into this with a little bit of unknown, a little bit of uncertainty. You know, how how good a shape is your opponent going to be in? You know, how how many roles, tough roles has he been able to get leading up to to this event? So um, it's interesting. But but one guy who's kind of stands out in the bracket is the 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 new up and comer kind of a newer black belt, Jonathan Alves, the AOJ standout. Now, you guys uh, have trained together in the past. Can you tell us what it, what it was like training with Jonathan? Oh, it was unreal. That, like, it was unreal training with him. Um, they, the quote that, like, always stuck out to me was, I believe it was Professor Guilherme that said this. Um, it was the first year when – Jonathan was still a juvenile. He was like, I can't believe it. Hoffa's best training partner is, you know, a juvenile right now. Really? Wow. And I remember that sticking out to me because I was like, good, because I can't believe it either. <laughs> you know, I can't believe <laughs> training with him either and, and the level that he's at. So, um, so he cool. was, he was that good as, as at the juvenile ranks. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was amazing right from the get go. And, and obviously now he's, you know, uh, within those years he's gotten exponentially better right but, uh uh yeah he's really good he's he's a, amazing on the mat um very disciplined obviously with not only like his training but his jujitsu style like his his game is very disciplined you know, like mm-hmm. it's a very tight strong jujitsu always and uh and he can scrap he's he's gotten down before in different matches yep and even um, I was just cruising the website. I was cruising the Art of Jiu-Jitsu online website. Uh-huh. He was a great teacher too. Huh. He was explaining some concepts, and I was like, "Wow, this guy's uh, this guy's teaching is very captivating." So, um, yeah, it's cool. It'll be cool to, to just, like I said, clash with all these guys. Yeah, man, um, definitely a good uh, a good test out there in the seventy-seven kilo division. Now, one thing he's currently signed up under Atos. I'm not sure if that'll stick because of uh, the split. They're now AOJ, but it wouldn't matter regardless because under AJP rules, if you guys both make it to the final, you still have to compete against each other. There's no closeouts. So uh, what are your thoughts on that? No closeouts under AJP rule sets. I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. I think, um, you know, like one of the biggest tournaments that I've, or one of my best performances, um, I ended up closing out the division with, with JT at Pan Ams and or at the Pans. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it, it kind of left me like really thinking about that that whole idea. Like obviously it would suck to have to fight JT, you know. Um, but also like not really. I, it sucks having to train with him. You know? <laughs> like, like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I like that the tournament is forcing people to fight. I think, you know, if you go into any other sport, there's not really the, the, nope. the option to close out things. So, um, yeah, I support it. You know, especially now I'm, I'm by myself essentially here at the gym. <laughs> like that, like, I don't, I'm not a part of any, I'm a part of Atos, but I'm not at the home base. Right. Uh, uh, if it were Jonathan Gracie instead, you know, who's a, a great friend of mine and good training partner, like I would be willing to, to fight against him as well. So, right. No hard feelings. I don't think. I, I hope everyone else, you know, is the same. Yeah. It's an interesting topic because, like you said, in most other sports, there are no closeouts. You know, you, you can't close out for an Olympic gold medal, you know. And, in wrestling or in judo or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, when you're in the gym, you're constantly training with these guys. And, and a lot of times in other, in other tournaments, when there are closeouts, it comes down to seniority sometimes like who's, who's just the more senior member on the team, but you know, everyone wants their shot at the gold, right? You put in, everyone puts in hard work. Everyone feels like they deserve it. So, um, yeah, I think forcing people to to match up 
in in competition is it, it's it's cool because it doesn't give you the option. When you have the option to close out, you can still fight if you want. But under AJP, there's no option. You got to do it. So I think it's a it's an interesting little uh, little thing that the AJP tour offers. So let's uh, let's talk about AJP competition in general. Anything that you really like about the rule sets, the rule set, the AJP rule set? Um, well, to be honest, like the, uh, I like that they're changing the rule set. I think the jujitsu rule sets can be, you know, like we're not done. We can keep evolving this and mm-hmm. make, you know, some radical changes to maybe make more exciting fights or just more, you know, uh, more masterful expressions out there of jujitsu rather than like, you know, holding on and, and being like more cheesy and competitive. Right. So we like that they're trying to change things. But even with that being said, like I don't really pay attention too much to, to what the rule sets are. I was going to, you know, try to figure it out within the week of, but uh, uh, yeah, like if they're trying to tra- change it up, like I, I'm all for it. You know, that's, that's funny you say that, that you don't pay attention to the rule set too much because I was speaking with uh, Bushesha a couple of years ago and he says, man, I don't even really know the rules because he just goes out to, to submit the guy. Yeah. <laughs> he, he goes, he doesn't, he's not really worried too much about, you know, coming up for the advantage in the last second and double guard pulling it. He's like, no, I just want to go out there and, and kill. So there's something to be said about that where, you can you can compete under any rule set in jujitsu as long as your mentality is that you want to go out and submit the other guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long <laughs> knowing what the rule set is is not going to change how I fight very much. I'm going to go out there and probably make the same decisions. So uh, it'll be good to know. Like I know that you're not supposed to grab inside of the pants. Mm-hmm. It'll be good to know those types of things but when it comes to like how they tweak the the point scoring or if there's advantages or no advantages or whatever it is like um, every day we're in the gym I'm just trying to make my jujitsu better and then when we get to the tournament I'll be trying to do my best to take it back yeah I think one of the most important things to think about is the shorter match shorter matches right six minute matches so you, you got to move. You got to go way quicker because a lot of times it's the guy who scores first can walk away with the W. For sure. Um, the other thing is that if it was IBJJF rules, you would get for like a near pass or a, a near submission or a near sweep, you would get uh, an advantage. Under AJP rule set, you get a point, a single point. So that's huge because – you would win the match if you, you know, if it came down to a single point, you'd win the match. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's a lot easier to almost pass someone than fully pass them for sure. <laughs> you know, like, and if that's throwing real points on the board, it's definitely going to change things. It's going to change the mentality of things for sure. Yeah. Especially if you have a shorter time, a uh, shorter match as well. Right. Yeah. You, you, you have less time to work. You have to get those kind of single points if you need them um, just because you have less time to, to get points. So do you have, what is your strategy? You mentioned that, you know, you, uh, you, you want to get the back. Is that kind of always what you're thinking when you go out there? Yeah. Uh, that's definitely where I feel you know, most dominant when it comes to getting the submission and everything and winning matches. Like I'm constantly attacking the back. That's, that's a, uh, that's a clear way to winning if it works. Now, have you, um, it seems like over the last couple of years, I was just watching a lot of uh, preview footage for the upcoming Grand Slam and a lot of guys like Diego Romalio, he's in your division, for example. <clears throat> he, he uses, I've noticed lately, a lot of lapel. Yeah. You know, some, of the, some of the newer guys in the division, uh, in the lighter divisions, are also using a lot of lapel stuff. Do you work the lapel into... Uh, a lot of your game uh i have options from there for sure but it's not it's never my first choice um yeah i'll, I'll take it out if i if 
I need to, but um, for the most part, like, I, I stick away from it. Save it. Gotcha. So, um, if you uh, let's say you uh, you were up against Marcio Andre first match, what would be uh, what would be your mindset going into that match? What would be your strategy? Uh, well, with Marcio, you know, uh, with Marcio, um, keeping everything tight, I feel is very important because if you start entering too much, or if you start entering into the scramble too often with him, like just naturally. He knows how to find his body into the side control or, or into good uh, passing positions. So um, kind of containing him and controlling him is, is, has been the name of the game every time I fight him. So it'll, it'll be more of that and, you know, picking my, my uh, uh, shots very, you know, very carefully. And, and he still does leave a whole bunch of openings. It's just you have to be, you know, very – Kind of careful and aware of, of where he's at because it's tricky for sure gotcha so um tough tough um, matches ahead of you are you planning on doing any other uh ajp event events I'll probably do every single one that, that comes up from now on um you know once you open that that can of worms it's, it's hard to to uh turn back like even right now, I, I first started with just signing up and thinking, like, oh, this will be a good tournament to do. But then within a week or two, I started thinking like, oh, okay, so this is this is something that I'm taking up, you know, for the next year, two years, however long they're they're running these, and I feel good. So awesome, man. I'm not I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's um there's a whole ranking system within the AJP tour. There's actually two of them, right? So like there's a year long ranking that is based on the belt level. So you get points depending on how you do and all the different events and grand slams, you get more points than let's say like a, one of the smaller national events okay. world pro you get the most points, right? So of course, depending on how you do in those events, you get uh, more or less points. So that one, you get a big cash prize at the end. Yeah. This for that one, because we had to pause competition, they're actually extending it. So it's typically a 12 month, uh, ranking season. Yeah. This, this one's going to be 18 months. Cool. So the more active you are, the more opportunity you're going to have to, to, uh, improve your ranking there. The other one, which is pretty interesting. This is a brand new ranking and this is just for the grand slam events. So there's six Grand Slam events, you know, um, U.S., Rio, London, Tokyo, Russia, Abu Dhabi. So depending on how you do just in those events, yeah, you'll also get ranked, but you'll get ranked not only at your belt level, but also at your weight class. And for there's going to be a ranking for the first, well, there's going to be a prize for the first and second ranked athletes and each belt level and each weight class, 10,000 for the first place, 5,000 for second place. So, and that's on top of the money that you can win just for competing and winning at each individual event. Yeah. Any, any thoughts on that? That's awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool, man. I mean, it just gives people more opportunity to win money. Um, you know, you can, the, the, the single season ranking is pretty hard to do, right? That, that's hard to win because you have to be really active. But with the Grand Slams, you just have to do the six Grand Slam events, which pay the most anyway. And you can get a better chance of winning if you come in first or second in your weight, weight class. I see. So just, uh, just another opportunity for, uh, for grapplers out there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's good incentive to keep going for sure. So, uh, what else can we expect from you, man? What What else is on the agenda for you coming up in the next couple of uh, weeks and months here? Uh, well, um, this next month or two is I threw my name in every hat that I found. So <laughs> you just can't wait to get out there. Here, fight to win, IBJJF, whatever, whatever is coming my way, I'm, I'm down. And uh, and beside that, if you if you're anywhere around Denver, you'll find me, uh, you know, skating around until the weather changes and training at the academy. So, um, 
uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at right now. What about the uh, the World Pro? So the World Pro, you said you competed in it when you were younger. Yeah. You have to take the trip to Abu Dhabi, but it was actually this one earlier in the year was canceled. It was rescheduled for November 18th through the 21st. Any interest in competing in Abu Dhabi again? We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, that's a, a little bit different of a trip, making it all the way to Abu Dhabi. But um, yeah, if I could, if everything uh, goes well and I'm healthy and the academy can can survive for a few days without me, I'll be out there. Awesome, man. Well, that's great to hear. Well, anything else you want to uh, to talk about before we wrap it up? I think that's it. Thanks for having me, Bill. It's good to see you always. All right, man. You too. Thank you so much. And uh, good luck in Miami. Can't wait to see you out there on the mats. Thank you.